Hey, it's Mike. Let's talk about Reaper. In the last episode, we looked at a JSFX called ReEQ. Many have said that it's similar to FabFilter's ProQ3. In the comments of that video, several people said that they liked the plugin, but they found it to be very heavy on resource usage. Now, my experience has not been the same, but then it dawned on me that a lot of people may not even really know how to check the CPU usage of a plugin. In today's episode, I'll show you how to check the CPU usage of a plugin chain and the individual plugins that make up that chain. Let's take a look. The project I've got open is the same one from last time. It's my cover of War All the Time, as made famous by Thursday. Since the last video, I've added a little bit more processing on the Master Effects chain. Let's take a quick listen to work in progress. I really like the way that this song is shaping up. I know that this is not exactly a review of plugins, but one thing that I've added to my mastering chain is Exciter from Audio Assault. This is a multiband saturator plugin, and it gives you several different types of saturation for each band. I definitely advise you to check out this plugin. It's currently on sale as of this video for, I believe, $9.99, and it's worth every penny. Anyway, back to the real intention of this video. There's a few different things that I can look at to check CPU usage of a plugin. First, let's go to View and Performance Meter. And this dialog gives us an overview of the CPU use of each track. We can see that my monitor effects is taking up approximately 0.3% CPU usage. The next column is the number of effects on a track. And the next column is PDC, which I believe stands for Plugin Delay Compensation. If I understand this correctly, this tells me how many samples of delay the plugins on that particular track introduces. Reaper does have automatic delay compensation for plugins to keep everything in line. If you'll notice, the effect CPU column is constantly changing because some of these plugins will vary on their CPU usage. In many cases, the fluctuation can be based on non-linearities such as analog simulation. I can see how much memory is in use by the project, and I can also see how many effects I have total and the approximate amount of CPU usage in total. This is helpful, but it still doesn't necessarily tell us what specific plugins may be resource intensive. Let's open up the effects chain on my master track. As I take a look at the listing of plugins, I've got Tape Machine 80, which is a Studer emulator from IK Multimedia. Takes a moment to load there. I've got an instance of ReEQ, which is currently disabled. Exciter from Audio Assault, one instance of Infinistrip from PSP AudioWare, an instance of Classic Clipper from IK Multimedia, an instance of Relimit, which is a Stock Reaper plugin, and finally a Loudness Meter. If we take a look at the bottom of the effects chain, I've got a couple of different values here. There is a 0% slash followed by a 3.5%, and this value here is fluctuating between 3.5 3.6. It may fluctuate a little bit further. What this figure tells me is the figure on the left is the currently selected plugin, and the figure on the right is the total of this chain. So, for example, if I click back on my tape machine at the top of the plugin chain, once it loads, we've got approximately 1.5% CPU on the left, followed by our total, once again, of 3.5 to 3.6. So, from this display, we can see that this tape machine plugin is using approximately 1.5% CPU. If I switch to JS ReEQ, it's currently showing zero, but it's not turned on. So I'll turn this on. And my chart now updates to show about 0.2%. Now to those who said that this plugin is particularly heavy, I suppose it can be if you have it on a whole lot of tracks, but 0.2% CPU is very negligible in my experience. Let's take a quick look at some of the parameters, and I've currently got it in eco mode. So I'll change from eco mode to high quality, and that has taken me up to about 0.3%, which in my opinion is still not heavy usage, especially when compared to the tape machine, which is sitting at 1.6. Up next, I've got the Exciter, and that is sitting at about 0.7. PSP Infinistrip, about 0.6. Now this plugin can be a little bit laggy because of the graphics, but even so, looking at the CPU usage, it seems to be not that bad. In my Clipper, 
I'm looking at about 0.7% CPU. Now my stock Reaper plugins are very lightweight. Relimit is showing to be about 0% CPU. And the loudness meter, of course, is 0% CPU as well. Now just to make sure that these numbers are accurate, I'm going to go ahead and turn off JS ReEQ, and I'll play back a bit of the song, and let's take a look at these values as the song is playing to see if they change. That looks to be about the same as it was previously. And now to the exciter. That's about the same as well. Same for PSP and Finistrip. Same for the Clipper. It would appear that these plugins use the same amount of processing power, whether they're actually processing audio or not. It seems to take the same amount just from the sheer fact that it's turned on. And for the sake of comparison, if I take a look at the bottom of my effects master track, I'm showing about 1,280 samples. And as I slide this over to the left, that seems to disagree a little bit with what's in here, but this may not have been refreshed. Let's close the performance meter and open it one more time and see if it gives us the same numbers. If I can find it, there we are. Now that's showing 1,194 versus 1,280. I'm not sure what the discrepancy is here. Let's remove JS ReEQ and see if that changes anything. And I'm still showing 1,280. So once again, I'm not really sure what the discrepancy is here. Perhaps one of these is reading something that the other is not. But as a general rule, you can look at these values in the lower left corner of your effects chain to see how much resources that a plugin is using. And you can also combine that with a performance meter to get a better idea of what may be having a significant impact on the performance of your system. Now you may have noticed as I was clicking through some of the plugins there was a little bit of lag and it may have caused some audio glitches as I switched from one plugin to the other. And that's generally just due to the effect that the plugin may have on the graphics card. I do have a nice video card in this computer. I'm currently running an RTX 3080 12 gigabyte model, but uh, as you noted, some of these may just take a moment to load for whatever reason. Most of the plugins throughout this project are using less than 1% CPU each, but I can see how over the span of a large project, having a whole lot of resource intensive plugins on each track can cause some problems. Knowing how to use these dialogues in Reaper to pinpoint plugins that may be giving you problems, that is a whole lot of peas to say in one shot. Can help you to make a more informed decision as to whether you should use that one particular plugin that seems to be consuming a lot of resources. I hope this helps. If you like the content you're seeing, be sure to like, share, and subscribe, and you can support the channel further by clicking the Buy Me a Coffee or Super Thanks button below. Membership is also another way that you can support the channel, and I'd love to hear your ideas for exclusive content for members only. Visit us on Discord and engage with other Reaper users. We'll see you next time.